Hi, I'm Timmy the Trash Can, and I love trash. Popcorn boxes, cups, and candy wrappers. Mmm, they all taste so good. Instead of throwing your trash on the floor, won't you please give it to me? Thank you for considering your fellow patrons. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. It is Tim Dillon, the keto kid, the greatest athlete in the United States of America right now. I have the heart of a lion. I am in ketosis. I pissed on a strip. Ben did as well. He is not in ketosis. His body is burning glucose like a fat bitch. Like a fat, yeasty bitch. Burning glucose. There is a crazy woman screaming on the other side of the property, but you know, not our property, but she's somewhere else. And we might have to shut her down. We might have to have her on the show. We don't know where it's going to go, but she is screaming. She is using slurs. <laughs> she would not be hired at SNL. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she looks like. If she can use those slurs or not, if you get my drift, is she allowed to say what she's saying? I don't know. It's too dark to tell. And we're separated, thankfully, by a hedge. So I don't know what's going on, but I will let you know if there's any interruption in the episode, that's probably going to be the cause. I I had a uh, epiphany today, the keto ice creams and the keto bullshit. It's not, it's not the move. Everybody wants to find the version of what they used to do, the synthetic heroin, so to speak. Yeah, I'll just take Suboxone, which you need while you detox, I guess. But you know, people people just stay on methadone. People, so these ice creams that don't have sugar in them are filled with sugar alcohols that fuck your stomach up. I don't even know how to pronounce. One of them is sorbitol. The other one is ethyritol or something. I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And these these sugar alcohols really fuck you up. You just start shitting. I remember. I had sorbet, chocolate sorbet at Red Mango when I was a tour guide on those double-dogger buses in New York City. And it went through me so quickly in the middle of showing people the 9-11 memorial, I had to run off the bus and just violently shit in Starbucks. I had to run into Starbucks and just start screaming until they took me seriously. I had to cut like four people in line. I'm like, I need it. And then there was just a tour bus full of people hearing they had to, they were, they were pausing and probably starting to Google a lot of the stuff I had mentioned. You know, when I, when I went by the nine 11 Memorial, I was, I, you couldn't, you can't just start going straight up crazy, but you can like, you can like, I would deliver it very sarcastically. I'm like, you know, 19 high, it came as a total surprise. Nobody knew. Nobody had even an inkling. This crazy bitch is still fucking going, man. She's still going. I, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Let her do it. She's, this is who, she, this is, you know, this is what it is. You know, God, God love her and whatever she's doing. They, what, what's be, to just explain to people? You just hear bursts of of talking. Now she's either on her phone, but I don't think so. No, she's just yelling, and she's kind of she said the n word multiple times. Yes, and I, I don't know what's going on. Now, there was a woman who basically got caught not too far from here screaming the N-word in a CVS parking lot, and I wonder if it's the same woman. She was fired from her job within the hour, which is clearly deserved. Go watch the video. She just goes in hard. And it's not even like there's no defense. It is bad, you know? And uh, she was fired from her job within an hour. Go See if you can find out what that job was. And all of her neighbors had had a restraining order on her already prior to her going nuts and screaming slurs in a CBS, uh, CVS. I'm so fucking Hollywood. CVS parking lot. 
I wonder what. I looked into this because I found her on yeah. my next door page because okay. she's in the neighborhood. And, and and now explain what next door is because next door is a great thing for people to be racist in their neighborhood. And and I was talking to Whitney Cummings about it. If you go on next door in her neighborhood, which is a nice neighborhood, mm-hmm. people are like, "There's that black guy again." And she's like, "He's delivering FedEx, <laughs> you fucking animal! Get the fuck off next door! What kind of rat website?" Is this? What yeah. is it? It's only for snitching. They say, uh, hey, just I want to let everybody know I saw a Mexican with a backpack on the corner of 46th and, and you know, whatever. Just letting everybody, and everyone's like, yeah, he lives there. Yeah, That's what his the home. fuck is, I mean, who's <laughs> running this? But you got couches off it, right? Yeah, I got free couches. So also people in the middle of a racist diatribe can give away a dresser. Yes. If you need it. They're like, by the way, I've noticed a few too many Mexicans recently. I do have a beautiful ottoman that we're, we no longer need. So if you want to come and get it, just be careful about the Mexicans mm-hmm. because we don't know. They're very physically unpredictable. Mm-hmm. It could just jump at you next door. I love that it combines racism with charity. Racism and generosity. Yeah. The next door, you know? Yeah. People, Jesus Christ. People are like, I've been noticing some strange going on, goings on in this neighborhood. I don't like it. But I do like to help young families get a start. So I do have a kitchen table if you want to come and pick it up. You will have to hear me talk about the Jews for a little bit, but that's a small price to pay for a sturdy kitchen table that served me well for many years. (laughs) You re- go on the next door. You realize we're living it, it, it paranoid. Mm-hmm. People are so fucking paranoid. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when I was growing up, literally they were like, everybody is trying to kidnap and rape you. Now that they were right about. That we took a while to realize they were right about that. But not us. Like they weren't trying to kidnap and rape us. It was, it was other kids, but it was happening. But there was like the white van. Ben, you're probably too young, but there was like the white van, the guy in the white van. If you are from Long Island and you can hit me up on social media, I I have blocked a few people today because they tried to be funny. They were not funny. So you got blocked. You you run the risk. I don't always block. I rarely block. But if I look back at our 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 history and you've you've tried five unfunny jokes in Messenger to me, you're gone. You're gone. No one has the time. You got to get better or or stop. So one guy messages me. He's like, hey, uh, the film Gray State. It's about uh, totalitarian uh, government. And I know a little bit about it. And I would say, uh, the guy who made it, uh, he got killed and his family got killed. Can you get the uh, can you get the word out about that? To who, dummy? You get the word out. To who? To my listeners? And what are they going to do? Get the word out to who? The the feds who probably killed the guy? What word do you want? Epstein, the word is out. The word doesn't matter. The word doesn't matter, buddy. What kind of... Are you people daft? Dude, can you help get the word? The word is out. It, It doesn't matter. It is immaterial. People know. Epstein was the biggest news story in the world, and it just fell off. The word is out. Think anyone gives a fuck? So stop with this shit where you message me, get the word out. Can you get the word out? You get it out. This bitch is still yelling. I cannot believe. We think she's going to come in here. I'll put it right on mic. I'll put it right on mic. And we'll lose it all. <laughs> we'll lose it all. Get the word out. When you were in Long Island, when you were a kid, there was always a guy, it was a pedophile in a white van driving around trying to kidnap kids. And this was something they would have like a, an assembly about it, which means they'd bring all the parents into the school and they'd go, there's a man in a white van. And then they send letters home with you and you'd give your, will you shut up? They'd give, they'd send letters. 
shut up or come on the show. <laughs> They'd send letters home talking about the guy in a white van. And then my parents didn't give a fuck about me. They were like, yeah, it's fine. You'll be fine. But just paranoia. And you go in the next door thing and it's just paranoia. People think they're being robbed. People think people are conspiring to rob their shitty house. Your shitty house. You think people are trying to knock over your house to get $18 in petty cash that you keep on the counter next to a couple Arby's wrappers? Calm down. The paranoia in this country that everyone's trying to kill you at every goddamn moment. Mm -hmm. You know, terrorism. You know, they, they talk about the opioid epidemic, like people are walking around with syringes full of heroin, injecting them into people and turning them into zombies. You know, they talk about it like they don't talk about any of the causes, any of the reasons it might be <laughs> happening. You know, areas of being deindustrialized. There's no job. They, they, they separated from all of that. There's a few books that go into that. But for the most part, it's all, they're all on the news like this opioid epidemic. We are, it's uh, just people running around. These dope fiends, these kids are doing heroin and people are. Um, but yeah, the next door app, man. She's still going. She's still going. You think, is there a chance she's on like a drug? Hmm. Probably. I mean, yeah. it, it sounds like she's thrashing around in the bushes, too. She does sound like she is thrashing around in the bushes. She's trying to get in here. No, not in here. She's up on the hill, but... She's up on the hill. Well, that's nice, isn't it? She could roll down, maybe, at some point. She's on the hill, folks. No need to worry. She's up on the hill. You sign in the next door and... Uh, yeah, I'm on it. Go. What, what do we got on next door right now? Because we got a post about this bitch... Because she's fucking my patience. No, I'm kidding. We're not rats. Let her roll around in that grass and scream. I don't give a fuck what she does. I don't rat on anybody for anything. I don't care. I don't rat. It's against my constitution. I don't like that Takashi 69. What's his name? Takashi 69. You got it. Yeah. I don't like that. You wouldn't see Doja Cat ratting mm -hmm. or little Zan. Maybe little Zan. I don't know. <laughs> Zan is a complex man. Mm -hmm. What is next door? What are some of the posts on next door right now? Okay, so top post, human excrement removal. Human excrement removal. Dear neighbors, somebody was nice enough to leave a big pile of human excrement in front of my house today, hoping my kids don't accidentally step in it. Does anybody know of a city service I can call to have it removed? A, how do you know it's human? This is a guy who somebody's putting shit in front of his house and this guy deserves it. I can tell already. I can tell this guy, you don't know how to remove shit. You put it in a bag. This is a, someone is putting shit on his property mm -hmm. for good reason. Hopefully my kids don't step in it. We'll tell them not to step in it. Why are you playing a guessing game with the kids? Mm -hmm. What else do you got? Do people answer this idiot? The Yeah, so let's see the top comment. Uh, dear Justice, this happened to us many years ago. The person nicely did their thing right up against our house. I took pictures and showed it to the next council meeting. People couldn't believe it. Council meeting? The city council? Yeah. I guess the neighborhood council? Yeah. I mean, can, do, can you imagine, just for a minute, I want everyone listening to this to imagine how meaningless people's lives are. Like how meaningless this guy's taking pictures of shit. <laughs> And then bringing it up in the city council. I understand if it happens every day or even once a week, but one time only. You know how lucky you are if that's all that's ever happened? One time yeah. somebody just shits on your house. But think of the inane, meaningless lives that people have that they need to fill. They get so excited when there's a, a mound of shit that they can photograph. They're so happy. I have ants like that. When something goes wrong, they get excited. They get real, they're like happy. They love to tell a tragic story. I have an aunt that goes, she get her face full, fills with life at the dinner table when she goes, hey, you know, Jessica, Jessica, you know, her brother, her brother jumped off the bridge. You know, the bridge that everybody jumps off. Yeah. He jumped off paralyzed. So maybe don't do that. 
don't do that anymore. And she's she's happy as a pig in shit mm-hmm. when she's able to talk about tragedy. She loves it. She loves, she'll bring up, she'll be like, you know, kid I knew took a little Xanax, drank, fell down the stairs, dead. It's a kid. He lived three doors over. Now he's dead. Took a Xanax, had a couple of beers at a party, fell down the stairs. I'm like, why are we, I don't even take Xanax and I'm sober. Why are we doing this? Why are we going over this? We're going to start just going tragedy by tragedy. Mm -hmm. She used to be like, there were little mini rocks in uh, the, the school where I grew up. So she'd go, you know, some one, of, one kid is going to eat those rocks one day and die. And this was, she just loved it. She was into it. She loves, you know, she gets into it. She, okay, I get it to an extent because I love, and I talked about this with a friend the other day. I happen to love, and I, I don't really admit this often or, or, or talk about this because people might take it the wrong way and it's not my fault. I happen to really enjoy funerals. I love funerals. I love the wake. I love the burial. I love the drive to the funeral. Everything about a funeral. I love seeing people you haven't seen in a while, but in a space where you know you don't have to keep up. Mm-hmm. It's weird to exchange numbers. Nobody's serious. Nobody's going to follow up with each other in a week and go, hey, we saw each other at the funeral. You'd be insane if you did that. You'd be like, what? <laughs> so if you even reconnect at a funeral, it's so brief. It's so surface. It's so shallow. It's so nice. It's so nice. Hey, have you been? And I, it's good. I like to cry. I like to be sad and think about my own mortality and feel bad for other people. I like to look at other people that have lost a loved one and feel bad for them. And sometimes it's nice when it's an older person and we can all say it's a life well lived. But sometimes it's nice when it's someone younger. Sometimes it's nice when it's somebody it was unexpected or someone, and we all have to really reflect on what it means because the older people, you don't have to reflect on what it means as much. You get it. They lived a good life, but sometimes it's got to be dark and real tragic. And they've got to be young. It's got to be young to really get the cry on and get the purge. You got to purge. You got to question. What is life? Why are we here? Am I on the right track? These are very important things. LA, they have silent retreats and yoga. In the Northeast, we had funerals. People would just die. And you would go, I love, I'd love a meal. Have you ever had a funeral meal (laughs) where you go out afterwards and everybody's eating and you're relaxing? It's kind of fun again. It's kind of nice again. Yes, we buried someone and they're not here. But that means more shrimp cocktail for us. We're here. We're alive. No disrespect. Carl Ruiz, a great man, would love this attitude. Mm -hmm. Passed away at 44. I feel very bad. Man, was he fucking funnier than comedians, and I know that doesn't say much, but God, was he fucking funny. He was a, we, Guy Fieri loved him. He was a chef. He opened a great restaurant in New York called La Cubana. The guy was... He, he texted me a photo on Twitter that made me laugh harder than some, anything else. I'm going to show it to Ben right now. Dude, and, this is, and familiarize yourself with the great Carl Ruiz if you haven't, because I'm telling you right now, this guy, everybody loved him. Sherrod Small... You know, Opie and Anthony, Vic Henley, all, all these comics really loved Carl Ruiz. And he was a partier, man. He would, he would break Bill Burr up, crack Bill Burr up, telling stories about doing coke in, 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 the, in the kitchen when he was coming up as a chef. And uh, he had like a spot in Jersey. And then he had, and then he just opened a spot in the meatpacking district. And uh, he sent me a message. And it's one, of, it's one of the funniest things that anyone has ever sent me. Okay? And he goes, he goes, This is what follows you when you are a food celebrity. Human garbage pelicans. And it's just a picture of these two (laughs) fat women with birthday hats on. And like, you know, a filter that gave them birthday hats. These two fat women with birthday hats. And he goes, this is who follows you when you're a food celebrity. Human garbage pelicans. It is one of the funniest things. I I laugh so fucking. And I messaged the guy and I said, I got to see you when I'm in New York. We get, and he goes, come to the restaurant. Let's eat. I wanted him on the podcast. I wanted him. He, there's a video that Opie just posted on Twitter where they walk into his apartment or a hotel. I don't know. It's beautiful. 
It's like in the middle of Manhattan or whatever, and he's just got cash, wads of cash laying on the table, and everybody starts going, what the hell's going on in here? And Ruiz just looks at me and goes, you know I'm a walking felony. <laughs> the guy lived. He was a, And now listen, I wish he was still here. I wish he lived fucking forever. That guy was great. But it's like my friend's father passed away, who we loved. This guy was great. We used to get, you know, get hammered all the time. Enough! She's still going. We used to get hammered. I mean, what has happened? We, I mean, we used to drink all the time and have fun, go out to dinner with this guy. And he passed away in his early 60s. And, and the funeral was so sad because he was dead. But there was something about a funeral. And there are people out there that know what I mean. They know what I mean right now. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at each other going, fuck, he's right. And it's been a while since we've been to one. And it would be nice, you know, a nice autumn day. Oh, a nice autumn day. Some nice hymnals. Uh, and I will raise you up on eagle's wings. <laughs> raise you up above all things. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't know the rest. But... That, you know, in a nice church, you go out in your black suit, maybe a, maybe a bum of smoke. Maybe you don't. I don't know. It's, you'll, it's all what you have to do. And maybe it's at a sit-down restaurant, or maybe afterwards you do something at a bar, and you just, some wings and a couple of cocktails. My friend Michael's mother, I mean, let me tell you right now, what I don't want anyone to die, but the meatballs I had at the, after dinner, I would kill her myself. I would stretch. They were so good, soft. That's what meatballs should be. And I don't listen. She fought cancer a very long time. The woman had more. She she was more of a fighter and she was tougher. And she got more out of life than I will ever get. And any of my clown friends will ever get out of life, by the way, because she helped other people and she had this camaraderie with other people that were fighting this thing. And she raised money for people and. It was really amazing to look at somebody whose life was cut short, but not in 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 fucking substance at all. She went through hell, but when you talk about somebody who's a warrior, a champion, I mean, I what's good about what I do is I spend time with people who lead meaningless lives, utterly meaningless lives, devoid of honor, devoid of anything. People that just float around and, you know, but... The food at this place, and I mean, I'm talking about quesadillas. They had Italian. They had wings. It was like a bar restaurant. And I was sitting down with a bunch of people I'd never met. I didn't know them. And I felt that I was having one of the best times I've ever had. So here's, I will throw this out. I don't want, to, I don't want this to seem weird. If you want me to go to a funeral of someone you know, I will go. As long as it's doesn't, you know, as long as it doesn't feel weird, I like to I like to hear about somebody's life. You know, people say to me when I go to funerals, they go, did you know this person well? And I'm like, I don't need to know somebody well to go and take stock of a life. I think it's a beautiful thing and I enjoy it. And I know there are people out here that, that say this is a sociopath talking or I'm insane. A every episode, there's probably that reaction, but that's not the case here. <laughs> This is a beautiful thing when someone is, is ripped from us. Mm. Not when it's a young person, unless they're very young. <laughs> if they're very, very young, it's fine because you don't know. You know what I mean? If they're very young, it's fine again. Very, very young. At, but if it's, if it's in the middle of their life, 20s or 30s, it's real rough. And once 60 and above again, it's, it's, it's fine. So what I'm trying to say, and I've, I've dug a little bit of a hole here probably with certain <laughs> people, but I, people need to admit, and my, my grandmother had a great funeral. She was like 89, and the priest went up, and he goes, Dorothy, and Ray Kump, the great Ray Kump was sitting there. And like, rah, rah, rah. Most people, they, the, 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 the mortician thought the funeral was for him. They said, well, he looks <laughs> fine. Well, he's not fine, but he looks better than most of the corpses. He's smoking, for instance. But my my grandmother, the priest, went up and he did this hellfire and brimstone speech. Goes, Dorothy has been preparing for this moment for decades, decades, and we were all shifting in our seats because we were like, "Fuck, whoa, 
basically, he was laying it on the line. Priests and funerals, that's their time. That's their time. My grandfather's funeral, beautiful bagpipes. Bagpipes. An Irish funeral, everybody bombed. These are beautiful things. Much better than weddings. Weddings suck. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the other thing when the kids born baptisms and christenings? Fuck off. I love a good funeral because you you really appreciate life. You appreciate being alive. When you drive out of out of a wake, and you're sitting there, and or you drive out of a burial, maybe it was Holy Rood Cemetery in Hicksville, and you're sitting there at the stoplight, and a song comes on, and it's a decent song, and you know the sun's out, and you drive in. Maybe you stop in a 7-Eleven, you get a Snapple, and you just say to yourself, I'm fucking here. I, I would go to one a month if I could. So that I just want to throw that out to people. If you want me at your funeral, and I do the whole thing, by the way. I do wake burial and then whatever dinner is, uh, lunch or dinner that we're doing. I do the whole, I do the whole thing. I do the wake and then I come back the next day for the burial. And if you tell me that the burial is only for the family, I'd come. Because I want to be the, I want to see it go into the ground. That's when it's poetic and meaningful to me. And listen, I, it is what it is. You know, I'm not, I don't like death. I like funerals. <laughs> They're beautiful things. Long Island, people have a couple of cocktails. They reconnect. It's really, and there's a lot of lucky people right now because so many people are dropping dead on Long Island from heroin addiction and there are so many lucky people that get to go to these events all the time and really kind of reconnect, you know? I'll see you at the funeral. That's what they say. Well, what else on the next door app do we have here? Because then I want to get into uh, pyramid schemes for a minute. Next post, title says Cop Cars. What? Cop Cars, but with an L at the end. This Cop post, Cars with an L? At the end. They, what the fuck they, does that they mean? They can't type. This, this woman, Sherry, she can't type. Sherry? She says, anybody know what's going on on loss? L-A-S. She didn't. <laughs> and someone commented, is it that what's woman? going on? Is it this woman right now laying in the fucking, in the fucking, in the, in the, in the grass rolling around? Is this, so that woman's clearly drunk or something, right? Or, yeah, clearly. Did she die mid post? What is that? Does anyone know what's going on on loss? <laughs> And what what is I don't even know what that is. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's what else? What else is there? This this app fascinates me. By the way, <laughs> this what is it? A site? Is it an app? You can get it on your phone too. Yeah, you have to sign up and register your address through it. So it's a whole like two week long. Are process you anonymous to get on or no? No, you have to have your name and address. So listed. your name and address, and you get to be as racist as you want as long as you own it with your name and address. Yes. Great. Personal injury attorney. I am asking for a friend if anyone can recommend a bulldog personal injury attorney in the L.A. area. Okay, that seems an odd thing to put. I love, by the way, that gets me, that brings on like all those people that crowdsource yeah. everything they do in their life. Like you'll see them, they're like, I want to read more. Does anyone have any suggestions of books? And they ask their social media network, they ask their Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. Could there be any less, like, could you want, suggestions less from a group of people than your Facebook. Right. The people that are still actively using <laughs> Facebook. Hi, I want to go to Disney World. We're leaving in nine months, but we thought we'd start planning now. Uh, does anyone have any hotel recommendation? And people love it. They go right and they just start writing paragraph, mm -hmm. paragraph, paragraph. Well, we stayed at the Grand Floridian and we liked it. It's a little pricey, but it's near to the point. And I'm like, bitch, go on YouTube. They review every hotel, every single hotel in Disney World. How far it is away from the park, mm -hmm. what the food's like, what it costs. They review everyone. People do that now. You don't need to crowdsource. You don't have a trusted friend that reads. You got to go on Facebook and go, is there any books? I want to read a book. <laughs> I'm in my mid thirties and it's occurred to me recently that I'm an idiot. Can any of you recommend a book? Yeah. Harry Potter, you dumb bitch. Stop crowdsourcing. People crowdsource their honeymoon. Hi, we're, we don't know where to go. Can anyone, you've, you've never wanted to go anywhere. Someone else needs to tell you 
where to go on your honeymoon? Mm -hmm. I always do, and the way to fight fire with fire, anytime somebody asks for a, a, a recommendation for a realtor or anything, they go, hi, I'm moving, and I, I want to know you. Do. You find the wealthiest area in wherever they're going, and you recommend the realtor who sells houses there to make them feel like shit. Like when, when I have friends, and these are comedians, they have no money, they're moving to LA, and they're like, hey, I'm just, anybody know a room open? Anybody know a room for like 700 of my, I comment Joyce Ray, who's a realtor that sells uh, estates in Beverly Hills, and, I, I, and it says luxury estates, and then like sometimes they'll go, oh, I can't afford that. And I'm like, well, that's not my fault. But always do that. Always try to make people feel like shit who are being stupid. So if somebody goes, hey, I want a realtor, maybe it's just a little bit out of their league. But find a realtor, look at the listings, and and really and make them say like, hey, it's a little out of my league. And then just write back, oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Always find something a little bit out of their league. I do it where people know it's a joke. It's it's really because I don't have time to really do it appropriately. Mm -hmm. But you can do it real good where you, you just recommend something. Recommend a restaurant that's a little out of their league. And and be like, hey, I don't know if you're into this type of thing, but here you go. You know, it's fun to do. It's fun to let people know they're trash. In little fun ways. Mm -hmm. Just let them know. I I always love when people will crowdsource a restaurant. And I'm like, just try it out. Mm -hmm. Or go to, some, go to someone you trust or find an institution you trust. Whether it's a, a paper that may have reviewed the restaurant or if you're in the Yelp and that bullshit, you can do that. Uh, I just say, hey, take a chip. But people make it out to be this big deal. This big deal, and they're like, well, I don't know. Should we go to Peter Luger's or should we go to Quality Meats? I don't know. And then, then people get in a fight in the comments. It's like, hey, go to both. Go to neither. Who gives a fuck? It's a $200 dinner. If, if, it's, if it's the one time you're going to do it in your life, don't do it. Spend the money on medicine or water. I know people are hurting, but you need not have a 300 comment fight about who's got a better steak. Try it. Or don't do it. it. It's amazing to me. I love Nextdoor app. I want to get on. I'm going to sign up and just start going wild. <laughs> I'm going to start making things up. Hi, there was a bunch of guys walking around with tiki torches. Has anyone seen that? <laughs> um, there's a lot of Russians in the area. There's been a lot of Russians. I'm thinking maybe it's possible that this has something to do with Trump? I don't know, but what well, what else we got on? <clears throat> Title of this one is No. Why can you never talk? Why do you always have to clear your throat before you talk on the podcast? I don't know. You always go, eh, eh, eh. Do I Something's always clear my throat? Something's wrong with you when you talk on this show. This is the most people who've ever heard your voice. Probably, yeah. And whoever will. Eh, 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 eh. Title of this post is no see ums. Does anybody know what to do to get rid of no see ums? These bugs are driving us crazy. That well, that's the most reasonable thing we've heard so far. What is that? Well, I would number one, you would probably call an exterminator, but I guess they want to do it on the cheap, and you know. So they're really tiny bugs. So now, can you just troll on here, and can you just what do you make want? What do you up? want me to post? I'll post something um, right now. Say, no seams are, are with you forever. You, you must leave the home. Go, no seams are never not with you. Okay. Just go, the no seam. Say, the no seams are attracted to pedophiles. Okay. Is there something going on that we should know about? The no seams are attracted to the blood of pedophiles. Okay. That's maybe why they're biting you. <laughs> Man. Troll, folks. Have a little fun out there. Are you sad? Do you need help? Do you want to speak to a counselor who may or may not be licensed? Better help. Take a chance. Better help. 
They had a massive scandal on YouTube. People were very angry, but I'm sure it's fine now. Better help. Better help. Are you upset with the way things are going? And you can't afford a real doctor. And you want to talk to a stranger. Call better help. You know the way I feel about better help, folks. It's a service where you will call a person and they have to speak to you. Tell them your problems. Masturbate on the phone of their voice. I've suggested that. It does not matter to me what you do. If you get off on touching yourself while a stranger talks to you, this is the perfect time to kind of do that because I don't, I, I'm sure the counselors are better than not. Listen, better help is better than nothing. It's better than nothing help. That's the point. And that's where we're at. A lot of people are in a desperate situation where they go, you know what? I need something that's better than nothing. Have you ever pulled into a rest stop and you went, well, it's, it's better than starving. That's what this is. It's better than nothing. It's better than the fucking wall or staring at a cat. Not all cats, I would imagine, because some of them sort of have wisdom in their face, but it's not really all of them. But, but I'm saying better help. You know, would I steer you wrong? Would I tell you a bunch of shit because I'm getting paid to say it? Would I? I can't believe I would. 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash Tim Dillon. This is our last ad with them, right, Ben? Oh, fuck. We got one more after this. What is the helicopter doing all the time? What are they doing with the copter? Um, 10% off first month, betterhelp.com slash Tim Dillon. Simply fill out a questionnaire. Me and Ray did it. It's very easy. It takes 30 to 40 minutes. <laughs> to help them assess your needs and get matched with a professional counselor. If you're gay, you can go to pridecounseling.com. That's the first question. They're like, who are you? What's your sexuality? I'm like, is this a dating site? I'm upset. Maybe I don't know what my sexuality is. Maybe I saw something in a locker room that's made me confused. I remember I saw a penis. I was, where was I? In seventh grade, eighth grade? I don't know. And I was on swim team. Maybe it was before that. And there was a kid who had like an adult penis before he should have. And it was just insane. Like every now and then you see a penis and you know that that person's going to have a better life than you, no matter what they do. Like they'll just have a better life. Most likely. I don't really know. But I remember looking at that penis and understanding like, well, that guy's going to do better than me. You know, um, better help, right? That's what we're talking about. Listen, what do you want to fucking, you want to do something stupid? Call better help. They'll, they'll fucking get you going. Who cares? What are doctors? What are licenses? What's medical school? It's all fake. Does it matter? You don't need vaccines. You don't want to lower your immunity. Better help. It's better than nothing. Get on the phone. You say, hello, I'm upset. And they'll, they'll talk you down. They'll talk you off the ledge. I think. You fill out a questionnaire. It's quick and easy. Let's you connect with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. Anything you share is confidential, except, of course, the NSA, who will take everything that you say and put it in a, in a, you know, some type of cloud or whatever there. And then eventually when the time comes, give it to the feds. and It'll be prevented, presented as evidence at your tribunal. But, you know, I'm sure better help. I'm sure they, I'm sure they're not working with the NSA. The NSA doesn't want to hear a bunch of losers. Drone on. I live in San Francisco and I, I haven't made any friends. Better help. Is it a scam? Who knows? 
I wouldn't advertise a product on this show that wasn't a scam. I want you to know that. I select scams. I've given scams all the time. And I, I just want to let you know because I care about you. Most of, no, I'm kidding. The CBD is legit. All that shit's legit. It's real. It's CBD. What do, what, do you, what do we fucking, what do you think? My bookie is good. Better help is the one. This is the one thing where I morally go, you know, what do I really do here? I mean, I signed the thing. I didn't really sign anything. But I have an, a, a, you know, an outstanding amount of ads to do. I have this one ad and then the next ad. And then we're not really doing any more ads for them. But I, I like, listen. It's not the worst thing is what I'm saying. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not selling you poison. I'm not selling you opiate. There are people that sell you heroin in the street. There are people that sell you children heroin. I'm not doing that. You get it? People that sell you kids Oxycontin and you find them the next day with blue lips. I'm selling you counseling. I get mad at me. I'm just telling you, you could call someone to talk to them. I'm not selling you some shitty mortgage I may have in the past. I sold myself a shitty mortgage. We all took them. You didn't take one out. You were a cuck. But don't, don't get mad at me is my point. Better help. Promo code Tim. You get a little money off. Stop fucking around. Stop acting like I'm trying to kill you. All I'm doing is trying to help you. I'm trying to help you better. You know? I don't know what goes on. I don't have problems. I do have problems, but they become, you know, comedy, I guess. Better help. All right. My friend, uh, my friend's sister went on. Uh, Facebook or maybe it was Instagram, whatever social media. And she goes, hey, I just want to let everybody know Beachbody.com is not a pyramid scheme. Okay? There's a lot of misinformation out there. It's not a pyramid. Now, what Beachbody is, for those of you who don't know, is it's like this pyramid scheme, clearly a multi-level marketing scheme like Amway or like anything else, which is based on you converting your dumb friends and selling them shit because they're fat. And you go, oh, a group of friends, we're all going to motivate each other better than uh, celebrities and trainers will. Um, No, your group of friends is why you're fat. You don't change with the group of friends. You get rid of them. You get rid of the fatties. No, your group of friends is the reason you're fucked. You're gonna try to you're gonna try to change six people's lives at once. Who the fuck does that? So that that's the whole thing about bi- beach body, and then you become like a coach or a beach body coach, and you put up all these motivational things like it's five a.m. and I want to stay in bed, but I'm not because I'm a beach body coach. Now, if you buy the the meals and the shakes, you too can be a Beachbody Diamond member. And and you just climb up this. But I love the... So Beachbody, by the way, of course had to like address the idea that they were this multi-level marketing thing, okay? And to me, it was one of the funniest things ever because basically they, they didn't tell you that they... Like, they have no argument that they're not. So get that up, by the way, Ben. Get the Beachbody. They literally have no argument that they are not and I like when I was performing at the Spokane Comedy Club in Washington, I saw a bunch of people in suits. And, you know, that area is weird. It's gray. It's dreary. It's like really kind of Twin Peaksy. And there was all these weird people and the teenagers, young people, old people, every race. And they're all walking in suits to an arena. And I'm like, what is it? Is it a Christian thing? What is it? And it was like this Amway spinoff, this worldwide dream builders online marketing cult. And where they all recruit people. It's like Mary Kay Cosmetics, you know, and, and if you sell a lot, you get the pink Cadillac and you got to just convert your friends and have these parties and stuff. And I'm all for ripping off and fucking over your friends. Do it smart, though. Do, do you have it up here? I have this long article, but it's a too long didn't read version right here about Beachbody. No, but is, the, is this the Beachbody site? 
No, let me uh, get that one. Ben is so bad at his job. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, Beachbody, they actually, on their website, they're basically like, listen, we're not a pyramid scheme. Wikipedia defines a pyramid scheme as this. Does that sound like what we're doing? And then the difference between what they do and what an actual pyramid scheme is is literally nothing. And and as you read it, it's kind of, it's like hilarious. They're like, hey, but they no one's going to that page because they know the people that are on it have been bit. They're feral. They've been bit already. So once you've been bit, no one can tell you that you haven't uh you know that you you need to reassess. And it's on their website, Ben. It's like a frequently asked question. It's like um is Beachbody.com a, a pyramid scheme? And, and their their rationale is is great. Here we go. I found it. First thing. This is one of my favorite things ever when you read this. You're still looking for it? Is it in the about us in the mission? It's, in the, it's the first thing that comes up on Google. Thank God we don't bring things up on the show, you know, because he's just completely, I mean, that's your one job is to just bring up the fucking article. How have I found it? How, how did I get it? It's the first thing on Google. What did you Google? I went to the Beachbody website because you said it was the first thing on the website. Well, why wouldn't you just put it into Google, the search engine, and see what came up? Anyway. Beachbody discusses pyramid schemes and multi-level marketing, right? This is great. You may be asking, is direct selling the same as multi-level marketing? Is it a pyramid scheme? A Ponzi scheme? Is it a scam? How do people make money? And what's the opportunity for me? Lots of great questions and we'll take one by one. Simply put, according to Wikipedia, direct selling is the marketing and selling of products directly to consumers away from a fixed retail location. So it's the guy that shows up, opens his trunk, and sells you shit. In other words, that's not what it says on Wikipedia. I'm adding that in. This is what they say. They go, so what about pyramid schemes? A pyramid scheme or Ponzi scheme is something completely different and far more harmful, like a scam. (laughs) That's far more harmful. It's like a scam. Is Beachbody a pyramid scheme? No. Team Beachbody coaches make money from actual sales of genuine fitness and nutrition products and hard work, not from recruiting fees or business fees. Coaches are never paid to recruit people and do not earn money from recruiting. Yet they earn money when they sell people to shit. Our mission is to help people live healthier, more fulfilling lives. How do people become coaches? Do they make money by selling Shakeology? Our coaches start as customers, right? A la Pyramid Scheme. Beach body. <laughs> Once they start to get results, people tend to notice and ask what they are doing. No one does that, by the way. People go, oh, you look great. You lost weight. Some people go, what are you doing? You go, I got, nobody wants to hear. At that point, people only want to hear like a one word answer. Low carb, slow carb, mm-hmm. keto, mm-hmm. paleo, walk around the block. I cut out booze. Nobody wants to hear this. Like, ask me, you look a little thinner. What have you been doing? You look a little thinner. What have you been doing? Take a seat. I've been waiting for you to ask me this. I've become a member of a very fulfilling new group that holds each other accountable. Have you heard of Shakeology? I haven't. Why are you looking at me like that? (laughs) Sit down and get ready for the secret. I'm about to tell you the secret about Shakeology. Some companies have used direct sales (laughs) modeling. Will you? Where are you going? I just want to talk about Shakeology. Do you have your credit card on you? We can get you started right now. They enjoy helping others achieve the results they've achieved using Beachbody products and want to share with others. So they sign up to be coaches. You could sign up to be a coach for $40. Dude, we're doing this. $40, I could sign up to be a coach. Plus 16, 16 a month. Fifteen ninety five recurring monthly fee. 16 a month to be, okay? This covers ongoing access to their website, training, reporting, personal development content, plus all the back-end operation of warehousing and shipping products. So then you got to sell to people, okay? 
Don't take our word for it. Here's team Beachbody coach Joan Crocker's story. She's been suffering from depression and was gaining weight. Her husband introduced her to Beachbody. She bought Insanity and worked out hard to the complete 60-day program. She said, I found my confidence and happy again and happiness again. I felt better physically, mentally, and emotionally. And then I decided I wanted to rob others. Here's team Jen Richardson's story at Beachbody. She was two months postpartum with her second son and searching for teaching jobs where she could put her master's degree to use. But because the country is a bag of shit, she decided to sell people fitness shakes because life is a hell. Like that, if this was honest, that's what it would really. She tried to use her master's degree, but because she couldn't find any work, she decided it was much more fulfilling to start hawking fitness shakes to her friends. That was the much better way to go about earning money. Sure, she had, her passion was for education. She wanted to teach kids how to read. But hey, you know what's a good close second? Teaching your fat friend how to hawk shakes. Shakeology. Let me tell you about Shakeology. I would plunge a knife into my own throat before I would sit down and have to look at someone in the face and say the word Shakeology. Mm -hmm. If you say the word Shakeology with a straight face, you need to be in a cell. You need to have the door shut. I love people that don't have any problem ripping off their friend, like getting their friends in a cult. It's so hilarious to me when people are just so like, hey, man, good to see you. That's how I got my fucking house. When I bought that house with a subprime mortgage, I got foreclosed. One of my best friends was like, it's a great opportunity. And me, because I was coked to the gills, went, yeah, that's good. He's like, it's a big yard. A developer is going to come in. They'll subdivide the plot. You'll be making crazy money. That sounds good. Just doing coke. I was like, I love you and George W. Bush. I'm going to be a homeowner. I love you, Bush. I love Dick Cheney. We need to honor our commitments to the people of Iraq. No Child Left Behind is a good program. Think of the things people repeat, like the platitudes people repeat, mm -hmm. meaningless. Yeah, they, they don't know anything. Barely know what No Child Left Behind is. Mm -hmm. That people fight about it, they argue about it, but they have no idea what it is. Picture me coked to the gills in a bar looking at somebody and going, No child left behind creates accountability. It creates accountability and incentives. These fucking teachers are paid too much money, which I still feel. <laughs> but I don't, the program, I don't know here, no, but I, these teachers, you know. The, the complaining of the teachers has got to stop mm -hmm. at a certain point, you know? Um, yeah, Shakeology. I love it. It's 6 a.m. I was going to sleep in, but that's not what I'm about. I just made a quick shake, and I'm ready to work out, burn some cows. Hey, do you want to look and feel good, too? Well, get your credit card out, because I'm about... You want to... Come on in. You're going to be a coach. You start as a fat shit, but you end up a coach. Don't you want to be a coach? Well, I don't have any skills. Shut up. You're going to be a coach. I don't really know anything about nutrition or fitness. It doesn't matter. The people at Shakeology have provided us with all the information we'll need. All you have to find is five other fat fucks that are desperate, that have postpartum depression. I love who this is being marketed to. They're like, Jeannie's story was great. She was laying on the floor of her trailer. <laughs> thinking about... <laughs> Who is this product for? People that have given up all hope. Jeannie was sitting in her car with the engine on in her garage. She was three gasps away from meeting Jesus. And then Jeannie went inside. And she went and she saw that her good friend at work had lost three pounds. By drinking shakes all day. So Jeannie said, God. Her friend had posted on Facebook that there was a unique money-making opportunity in the fitness world. Jeannie had always wanted a beach body. She never had one. She had uh, 
you know, scars. She had uh, stretch marks that looked like spiders crawling up her stomach. But she wanted that beach body. So she saw one of her friends on Facebook go, hey, are you laying on the floor of your apartment thinking of reasons not to kill yourself? Maybe you should become a beach body coach. You can look good and feel good. I love who this is marketed to. Let's keep going on the... By the way, I wonder if any of them were like, this person was doing good and they decided to get involved. Right. Or is everybody has a gun in their mouth before they decide, which of course you have to. To lower yourself to this, mm -hmm. to lower yourself to hawking fitness shakes to your friends. It, you have to be ready to kill yourself. Let's see if there's... Hillary Kelly remembers her early days as a team beach body coach and how she built her business through hard work. I'm not a nutrition expert, but I started with the simple approach of sharing my story both in person and on Facebook. Here's how that should have ended. I'm not a nutrition expert, so I didn't get involved. <laughs> End of post. I'm not a nutrition expert, so I shut my mouth and went on my merry way. But no, she decided... She goes, I'm not a nutrition expert, but I, I started with a simple approach of sharing my story, both in person and on Facebook. I think people responded to that. I had no agenda except to help people get fit. If you break it down, that's what this business is all about. Yeah. These people talk in fucking like pamphlets, you know? Right. I had no agenda. Who said you did, bitch? You seem a little guilty. Doth protest too much. They're like, it's not a pyramid scheme. I had no agenda. I'm not fucking you. I didn't do anything. I didn't go in your purse when you were in the bathroom. What are you saying? What do you mean there was $20 on the wallet when I walked in? You better talk to Shakeology. I love all of the fucking examples of people that they use. She was suffering from depression and was gaining weight. Her husband introduced her to Beachbody. Her husband was like, listen, you fat, sad bitch. You better clean it up and you better start bringing in some money into this house. What a nice guy, huh? He introduced her to Beachbody. She's depressed. He didn't introduce her to a doctor. He didn't introduce her to a therapist. He introduced her to a multi-level marketing scam. Honey, you seem depressed. You don't get out of bed all day. Why don't you start hawking fitness plans? Why don't you get your monthly sales numbers up? That's why you feel like shit. Because you're laying in bed every day and not selling shakes to your friends. I love it so much. I love it so much, man. I love how everybody using this is completely... Our Team Beach Body Coach Network is over 400,000 strong. God help us. And our online community is million strong. Meaning no one is ever alone. No matter the goals or how far anyone thinks they have to go. Great. I love it. Other direct sales companies you may know. Avon, Mary Kay, Tupperware, and Stella and Dot. Yeah, Tupperware parties, Avon. I mean, I love it. I love the stories of the people. <laughs> Two months postpartum with their second son, searching for jobs. I think what coaching really did for my future goals is give me the belief that anything I put my mind to, I can accomplish. There were several years of self-doubt where I lost confidence in myself, and coaching turned that around for me. I watched people from all walks of life create incredible success for themselves with beach body coaching simply because they believe they could. So what do the coaches do? They, they're energetic. They're enthusiastic. The, they are products of the product. What a line. They are products of the product. I got to start doing this, man. I, now, by the way, I'm going to tell the audience this. If Beachbody contacts me and pays me money, I will sell Shakeology and I will delete this episode. <laughs> I tell you that all the time in full disclosure. I give a fuck about you pigs. I will, I will shove shakes down your throat so fucking fast, you fat slobs. <laughs> I will put a shake in my ass <laughs> if Beachbody tells me to, if they want to spend some fucking money. That's what I do. I ridicule these companies to try to get them. I'll, I'll become a fitness coach. What, I got to make some motivational Facebook posts? I'll do that. Can easily do that. I used to be fat. I used to eat pizza. Not even good pizza, like Papa John's, Domino's. So I like the way it felt in my mouth, warm and gooey. 
like I was eating my own insides. Anyway, then I went online and saw a friend of mine was marginally less fat. And I asked her, I said, hey, fatty, are you less fat? She said, yes. I said, what are you doing? She goes, well, I'm part of an online community that provides me the support and the nutrition products I need. And I said, well, get me in on the ground floor and let's go and spread the word of Shakeology. You meet thin people, it's never because they drank shakes. It's never like a fad. Some of it's, you could do keto or paleo or whatever. I, you know, I'm going to do keto for as long as I can, but I, you know, you don't do it forever. It's impossible. You can't do it forever. It's, it doesn't work forever. Eventually you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tongue fuck a piece of sourdough. I don't even like sourdough. And now it looks good a little bit. I don't even like it. So yeasty bread. It's a dumb bread. People in California like it. The only good thing about it, you toast the fuck out of it. And you slather it with avocado and smoke salmon. Do a little avocado toast. Monday.com. Folks. 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 Who's a businessman? I want... Who is? Who's a businessman or a businesswoman? Are you... Or are you not a fucking killer? Are you killing it? Are you crushing it? Are you grinding? Are you hustling? Are you winning or are you losing? Where are you and what are you doing? Do you wake up every day and say, today's Monday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get it. I'm going to chase it down in the woods and get it. With my bare hands, take a bite out of it, draw blood, drag it back to a basement and chain it to something and try to brainwash it and make it love me. Is that way you feel? That's the way I feel about Monday. Why? Tim, why are you so confident about Monday? Do you not dread it? Do you not do I not dread it like the rest of you? Fat nothings. I don't dread it. I wake up and I fucking love Monday. I hate Saturday. Because Saturday's loser day. Everybody's spending time with their kids. Buying flower pots in Home Depot or watching sports. I like Monday when everybody's got to go to fucking work and earn it. And I have Monday.com. Monday.com is a software tool. That's engineered to help me and many others maximize our efficiency. Whether you are two people that have a a, a doomed business or thousands of people collaborating across the globe. Think uh, the Epstein Network. Whatever it is, you get in there with Monday.com. There's no excuse to miss an email. There's no excuse to miss a meeting. There's no excuse that you didn't get the document. Where is the invoice? None of that. There's no fucking Doreen in the conference room throwing you under the bus. There's no fucking somebody stole your lunch and you're you're all oh you're all about that and you're not thinking about the sales pitch that you have. Everything is streamlined. It is a great service. And it allows you to be efficient, to worry about developing the skills that you need to develop, being a liar, cheating, stealing. Let Monday.com provide you the infrastructure to do that effectively. Legally. Monday.com will organize all the other parts of your business so you can focus on the most important part, hitting people over the head with a soft touch. It's what matters. Going out there and getting it. Okay? Let Monday.com... Make sure that everybody in your company and organization is on the same page while you devote all of your time to exploiting the relationship you have with your friends and family. They're all expendable. You got to use them. Use them or lose them. But the last thing you need is to worry about if the back office is running the way it should be. But Monday.com will let you focus on the important things. Like putting together a a business plan 
that allows you to go out into your community and decimate it and then move on. Stick and move, hustlers. I'm kidding, folks. I'm a comedian, and this is what I do. I, I make people laugh. This is my job. But many people know me, know that for many years I was overweight and a drug addict, uh, and I was not organized. And uh, now I am an athlete, and I am organized, and I am sober for eight years. And Monday.com did that for me. Monday.com is the reason that I am sober. Um, because I was drinking because I was stressed out at work. I would miss an email. I was stressed out. And Monday.com allowed me to maximize my efficiency, to be a more efficient man. So after work, instead of get, going and drinking a bottle of gin and doing cocaine, um, I would go home and do push-ups and read the Bible. So I can't overstate the impact that this particular uh, thing's had on me. You might be different. But I'm, what I'm telling you right now is that if you have a small business and you don't want to worry about the BS, the horse shite, let your business fail because you don't have the guts or the drive or the tenacity or the talent, many of you don't, or the ability, or the social circle, you know, or the raw native intelligence, or the wherewithal, you know, you don't have to succeed, many of you, you have empty lives, no wives, no kids, you know, what do you need, a couple more dollars for what, more vapes, who cares, but for those select few of you who I call killers, crushers, hustlers, winners, Devotees of the greatest uh, motivational sales tech guru that has ever lived, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V. Man, Gary V helped me. I can't explain. Gary V changed my life. A lot of people think I make fun of Gary V here or make fun of, not really make fun of Gary V because he's made millions of dollars uh, selling stuff to retards. But what I, what I'm, now, I know that Monday.com is very corporate. They don't like this. But the reality is people will use your service. Shut up. Um, promo code Tim. What is a promo code? Slash Tim. Monday.com slash Tim. Go get the service, folks. Don't fuck with me here. The point is, Gary Vaynerchuk changed my life. I was living in the middle of a busy highway, the 405. In the middle of it. I was just... I had a tent that was on the side of the highway. And I'd have to like dash across the highway every time I wanted to get somewhere. And I saw a bad accident one night. And a woman died in front of me. And her phone was still in her hand. And I grabbed her phone out of her hand. And I saw a quote from Gary V. And Gary V. And then I fucked her. And I'm kidding. I don't fuck women. I fucked her boyfriend who was alive. We had sex on her corpse. He's had to do gas digital, right? So if they call me and they're like, don't say this. I mean, I, I have to be like, guys, you know, I thought we're the free speech people. What happened? I'm kidding. No one had sex with anybody, but I did. This is true and real. And I did see her phone and it said, quote from Gary V. And, and the quote, uh, was it said kindness is delicious. And I like that quote because I hadn't eaten in a while and I realized that I didn't need food. I could just eat kindness and I could pay for things with gratitude. And I realized how important it was to win as opposed to lose because that was his other quote. Stop winning and start losing. And once I read that, I was I had gangrene all over my leg. I cured that and I was able to just, now I have a mansion that I paid for with gratitude. And to anyone that you think needs help, like a lot of people in this country are like, oh, I want my health care. No, 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 no. Here's what you need. You need to start winning. That's all. Start winning. I would love, by the way, just as an aside, if you put Gary Vaynerchuk, like, you know, these town halls that they have with Bernie Sanders, 
where people are like, yeah, the debt collectors came into my son's hospital room, you know, and we love if like Gary Vaynerchuk was just like, all right, well, listen. Are you hustling? The woman's in tears. She's like, what? He's like, listen, let's be honest. All I heard was excuses from you. You talked about your son. You talked about cancer. But you know what I didn't hear? I didn't hear any plans for growth. That's what I didn't hear. And then if it was a moral country, the people of that town hall would murder him. And they would use his head. They'd put it on a pike and use it as a battering ram to go into the White House and then also burn that down and start again. Monday.com. <laughs> slash Tim Monday.com Slash Tim Okay All I am saying Is use Gary Vaynerchuk's head As a battering ram To get into the White House Burn it down And start again And let's maybe do it the next time A country that is not run By satanic pedophiles Monday.com Slash Tim, because organization is the first part of making that happen. Goodbye. You want to, you, you know, uh, Brendan Schaub and Theo Vaughn had a cheese off on their podcast, which makes millions. Uh, and because of that level of content, they had a cheese off where each of them recited a cheese. Schaub got like three cheeses in and then started repeating, you know. And so, do you... <laughs> Do you want one? It's, it's true. He said sharp cheddar twice. He was out. Theo was pretty good. Do you do you want to have a bread off right now? Yeah. One bread. Do, can you do it? Yeah, I think I can do that. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know how strong. I am so good on cheese. I don't know how good I am on bread. No, I can only name like five. Shut up. Do you believe in yourself? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, I do. What do you think Jan Richardson at Beachbody would say? <laughs> She'd say, believe it. Okay. Bread off. Who, who has the advantage? The person who starts or the other person? Uh, Does it matter? I don't think it matters. Okay. Would you like to start or should I start? I'll start. Rye. Rye bread is your first. Yes. I'm going to try to say basic bitch ones that you know. Or should I just say really wild ones? I'm going to say basic bitch ones to try to knock you out fast. Wheat. Pumpernickel. Ooh. Pretty good. <laughs> My grandfather liked that. That was the one with caraway seeds, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not enjoying this out there, <laughs> Shub's making has five Ferraris, and that's what they do. So shut the fuck up. Um, brioche. White. Okay. Sourdough. Ben, we're four in. Whole grain. I'm going to allow it because I think it is. I'll allow it. Okay. Hala, the Jewish bread. It makes the thick French toast. Ezekiel bread? I will. Yes. Okay. French bread. Bread sticks. I'll allow it. <laughs> yes. I'll allow it. Okay. I'm not thrilled with it, <laughs> but I'll allow it. Um, Shabbat. Do you have breads up on the? No, no I don't. You could be making up breads. That I don't it's even know. Not, if it's I'm real. not making up Shabbat. They had it at Wendy's. Not making up. The last one I have is this one's not fair. Garlic knots. First of all, what the fuck is wrong with you? There's more breads out there. Um, I will accept garlic knots. Okay. I will accept now you're just saying things that are made of bread, but I'll accept it. Okay. Um 
I was going to say like Ala Fungiasi, which is a great bread. Oh, wow. Oh, so nice. Okay. They have it at Marea in New York City. My audience has been. No? Okay. <laughs> By the way, if I sold out uh, an arena and Stephen Paddock shot it up, he'd get a Congressional Medal of Freedom. And that's just judging by the, the <laughs> comments that you people leave. Okay? Stephen Paddock would be running against Trump right now if he shot my audience in the mouth. <laughs> um, kidding. We love each and every one. <laughs> what was your last bread? My last one was garlic knots, but my one this time Now, is... I'm going to say, I'm going I'm to say ala fungiasi. Or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Okay. Um, I like the, the raisin bread that I get at the store. It has raisins okay. in it. You could say cinnamon raisin bread. I'll yeah. do that. Okay. I'm going to say... Now, it's interesting. I was going to say a roll, like onion roll. But is that a bread? I don't know if that's a bread. So to keep it fair, but a Shabbat, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with a marble rye. Oh, fuck. Woo, fuck. Because it's a distinctly different Damn. bread. Is that the one from the Seinfeld episode? The I think. Damn it. Yeah. I should have thought of that one. I'm about to lose right here. I'm gonna No, there, there's you're you're really not thinking. Think of countries. A lot of countries have breads. You're not thinking. Damn it. Can I start naming the breads at Subway? No. No. I mean, I guess. I mean, it just doesn't seem. Subway, Subway always smells like they're baking a sneaker in there. Why does the bread baking process smell like a like a sneaker that's been left out in the rain? What are they baking? Subway never smells good. No, it never even smells. That was one of the things we used to, you know, when we did get cold in a ton of stone. Mm -hmm. We used to sell Subway. The thing we used to make fun of, we used to go Subway, eat fresh with flies. Because there was always flies on like the, the white mm. tomatoes. I'm going to give you one. Say Italian bread, dummy. Is that one? I almost yes. I almost thought of that, but is that real? Yes, dumb, dumb. Okay, Italian bread. Okay. You said Italian bread. Now, Ben is lost already because I've now given him. Yeah. So Ben has failed. But you've said Italian bread. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, um, and this is not fair either. Because now I'm starting to blank it. I don't know why I'm fucking blanking. There are other breads. There's other fucking breads out there. Why am I? Oh, oh I got one. I back. Hold on. Shut up. Shut up. You'll be back in the game when I when I when I when I when I tell you. Um. So as a bread, I'm going to say. Um. Uh, semolina bread. I'm gonna Google that to make sure that I'm not full of shit, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yep, semolina bread, semolina bread, semolina bread. Okay. Potato bread. Potato bread. Hold on. This, I, this, I know this is riveting content. You know? Shut up. Are you thinking of breads in your fucking car or wherever you listen to this shit? You should be. This is this has gotten hard. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have given Ben a lifeline and got him back in because now he's pulling things out. Uh, I could easily say like cranberry, like the cranberry bread, that the the, the pe peasant bread. I'm gonna say peasant bread, which is a legitimate bread. Okay. It's a genre of bread. I I'm gonna go religious. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, which is matzah. I don't know. <laughs> Did you say matzah already? I didn't say matzah. Okay. Keto cloud bread. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> the keto kid. All right, we'll stop this. <laughs> but my point is that why are she, uh, Theo and Chow making trillions of dollars doing this? She, they did a cheese off. We just did a bread off. Cheese is so much better. Mm -hmm. There are so many more cheese. You want to just go cheese real quick, rapid fire. Mozzarella. Uh, American. Cheddar. Swiss. Goat. Uh, fuck. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, buffalo. 
Damn Buffalo it. is not a cheese. Damn it. Was, damn it. Blue. Gruyere. Gorgonzola. Good. Roquefort. Smoked cheddar. There's 90 cheddars. Oh, Munster can... cheese. Um, Stilton. That was nice. Yeah. Camembert. All right. We'll stop. <laughs> Here's the point, folks. The realize the show is not big enough because I don't have contempt for you as an audience enough. And I've tried to entertain you. What I believe I should start doing is nothing and have contempt for you as, as an audience and sit here and instead of giving you unique and, and funny insights on the world, just start to do garbage. Just start to do boring, like, let's pass the time shit. Uh, like that you would talk to, you know, like, you know, you, your buddies at a sleepover when you were in like 11th grade. You go like, hey, Ben, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I do, uh, I do love Theo and Brendan, and I do. I would like to go on King and Sting. Do they have guests? I don't think so. Well, we're going to change that because you know what? I've had enough of the nose. I've had enough of the doors slamming in my fucking face. I'm a keto kid, and I'll get on that fucking show. A couple of pods I need to do. What happened with the Your Mom's House? Here's what happened. They had me on Drew again. I was in Cincinnati. I'm like, my flight is not going to get back in time. It's going to chance. The traffic's a fucking nightmare. I'm like, I can't do Drew. So they're like, uh, we'll get you on again. I think that might be it. Yeah. They've had like 97 people on your mom's house since I've come out here. That's okay. That's okay. We're independent. We don't need it. We work for Shakeology. <laughs> Are you depressed, sad, fat? Well, have we got news for you. Wait, are you doing good? No, no, no. This is not for you. Do you want to live and do you enjoy life? Well, then our product is not for you. Our product is for people with postpartum depression or thinking of sticking their head in an oven. That's who our product is for. That's probably who this podcast is for, too. Maybe not. There are some people that enjoy this that are, uh, yeah, I see them, I meet them at shows and they're like, you know, young professionals and they're good looking. And then there are, you know, there are the others. The ones who dwell in darkness, you know? Um, what did I want to say before we get out of here? I don't know if I'm doing that double-decker tour bus around Manhattan show in November. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still deciding I may not do it. I probably, I'm not doing it as part of the New York Comedy Festival because I'm on tour with Kreischer, with Bert. So I am not doing that. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it later in the month. It's very possible that I do it later in the month. <coughs> it's possible that I don't. I still have to make that decision. It's a lot to do. It's a lot to get out there. Uh, not to get out there, not to fly out there, but the bus rental you know, there's a lot. The whole thing, the weather, the this, the that, insurance, the money, the this. I, I do like it. I almost kind of want to do it one more time to just to just wrap it up and say goodbye. I may. I'm still deciding. I know many of you have reached out. You want to go on it. It's a unique experience. It's very, no one will ever do it. I mean, it, it's truly cool and I like it. It's a lot of fun. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I might. Um, as always, live dates. Okay? I want you fuckers to come buy some tickets, tag your friends. Like, this is like Shakeology. Side Splitters in Tampa, October 17th through the 20th. Hyenas, Fort Worth, Texas, November 14th through the 16th. Vermont Comedy Club, November 21st through the 23rd. Stress Factory, Brit I'm going off keto in Vermont. I'll tell you that much. I'm fucking, I just, when I go to Vermont, I just, I just drink maple syrup. Stress factor, and it's not even good. It's like the sugar syrup is better. The, mm. the Aunt Jemima is better. The corn syrup's better, but whatever. But it's fun to have the, the, you know. Stress Factory, Bridgeport, December 5th through the 7th in Connecticut. Comedy Connection, Providence, Rhode Island, December 13th and 14th. Magoobies, Timonium, Maryland. God, I love Magoobies, but that town is not fun. It's a rest stop that became a town. 
January 9th through the 11th. I'm also I'm having a crab cake there. Zany is Chicago, February 5th through the 8th. This is a long run. 5th, 6th. She's still going? Oh my God, she's singing now. What is she singing? I don't know. Let's sing with her. I keep it juicy, juicy. I eat that lunch. I, he like the booty, booty. He like it plump. Get it juicy, juicy. Now, if you can see it from the front, you're going to see it from the back, 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 back. I put my true religion in my mouth. I put my ass in your face now. Come out, Zanies in Chicago. House of Comedy, Bloomington, Minnesota, April 9th through the 11th. House of Comedy, Phoenix, Arizona, May 7th through the 9th. Comic Strip, Edmonton, June 18th through the 20th. And the big one, I'm announcing, I'm announcing this. This is the big one. Headlining Caroline's Comedy Club in New York City. March 12th to March 14th. Five shows, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, March 12th to the 14th. Caroline's in New York City. It's going to be a big show. I'm going to fucking get great people to open for me. I'm going to put great guest spots on that show, man. It's going to be fucking killer. That show, I can promise you, is going to be great. So those are the live dates. They are all on Instagram. They're all on timdillancomedy.com with links to ticket pages. I'm also coming to Edmonton. I think I said that. Uh, comic Strip in Edmonton, Canada. Uh, Edmonton, Alberta, June 18th through the 20th. So I'm out there on the road. Get tickets. Show's a lot of fun. I have new uh, 45 minutes of material. Um, and I also, you know me, I fucking talk about all kinds of shit on stage. It's not, it's not only material, trust me. To the, uh, you know to the consternation of some of my representatives. They're like, we really can't submit this tape where you just go off about the Illuminati for 10 minutes. I'm like, but the audience is laughing. They're like, yeah, but you're, you're directly referencing networks. And I'm like, you know, this isn't. I'm like, well, yeah, I understand that. I think in one tape I submitted, I said, a carpool karaoke would only be funny if they get into an accident. So they were like, yeah, we don't, we shouldn't really... Submit this. And you said Jimmy Fallon was chained to his desk so he didn't bite someone's tit. I'm like, is that not how that show works? I mean, I imagine that's how that show works. He's 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 injected with things. He's and then he's chained to the desk. Am I wrong? Am I is that not how late night television works? Is he doing this of his own free will? I mean, I know he's making money, but after a while. Guess who's on uh, Fallon tonight? Billie Eilish, our girl with a leg brace. I wonder what happened. I wonder what happened, Billy. Did you trip at Bohemian Grove? <laughs> I know she's not a saint. She's probably just fucking boring. Or maybe she is. What the fuck do I know? I don't care anymore. Nobody's giving me anything. The fuck am I protecting? I'd sit down with her if she bought me lunch. She's got to buy me lunch. Bitches in arenas. I'm hawking CBD. <laughs> sit down. Explain to me why you're good. Explain to me why this is good. I'm Billy. You want me to be Billy? I'm going to be Billy Eilish right now. Get everybody ready. I am sad, but you, ha, I don't know why you are. Yeah, I want to sacrifice. A baby. <laughs> Defiling innocence is the highest sacrament in the religion I am in. Ha, 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 Death. That's Billy. And, you know, what are you going to do? We're going to have a lot of fun if you come out to the shows. And uh, the Patreon episodes, patreon.com. The Tim Dillon Show. We got a lot going on. We're going to get some guests on the page. We're not really doing a ton of guests on the main program. We do, we'll do. we do the big guys. We'll do like Coco Diaz and stuff. But uh, we're not doing like, you know, people that are not worthy of getting this time. Because we have a lot of fun with this time. But on Patreon, we're going to do some guests. Some uh, maybe deeper interviews with people. So if you're interested in that stuff, Patreon, $5 a month is the way to do it. 20, you could be a Rothschild member. We appreciate that. 
longer versions of the videos we did. Fun video we did that uh, video that we did. I think it's at one hundred and sixteen thousand or something views on Twitter. If you see those things and you can share them, it's great. If you do, if you're in a position where you can't for whatever reason, they're they're too whatever, then fine. Then create an alt account and share them from there. Okay, but it's good, you know, because I'm not I'm not waiting for blue check mark people to share the videos, but they are funny, man. It's a type of comedy. There's not a lot of people doing what we're doing out there. There's just, there's not. And I'm not saying that to be like, wow. And by the way, that shocks me because what we're doing isn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And it shocks me that more people don't put together. uh, But I think a lot of people just maybe are afraid of rubbing people the wrong way about doing some of these things. But there are some people that are doing funny sketches. Joe Quazala does funny sketches. Uh, Meg Stalter, Megan Stalter does funny sketches. Connor O'Malley does funny. They're all funny. And I, all those people might hate my guts. I don't care. But I think their sketches are good. You know? They probably think I'm like David Duke, you know, <laughs> because I think because I think Shane Gillis shouldn't be roasted in the town square. But maybe they, I don't know how they feel about it. I'm just saying those are three very funny people. I, it's not my business how everyone feels. I don't care. <laughs> None of it matters. My uncle... Lived in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Had a great cheese place. And there was a great fish cheese spread. If the guy making that spread was a Nazi, I don't care. And that's a bad example. Because no, the Shane's not a Nazi. And, and SNL is nowhere near as good as that fish spread. <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? I don't care what you believe in your home. The reason we have the country set up the way it does is to crush your beliefs anyway. Get the word out. Just fuck up. The only word that's getting out in this goddamn country is about Beachbody.com and Shakeology. Goodbye.